Hey guys, we are going to graph a polynomial. Okay. So we're basically going to do three steps here with an optional fourth step. Okay. So my first step is we're going to factor and find the zeros. You might be like, that sounds like two steps, but they, they go hand in hand. Okay. So we're counting them as one step. Second, we're going to look at end behavior. Third, we're going to look at multiplicities. And then we'll talk about our fourth optional step once we get there. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to factor this. So I noticed that I can pull out an X squared, right? I'm going to write this over here. So I can pull out an X squared. When I pull that out, I'm left with X plus two on the inside. Okay. And that is looking pretty factored to me, right? Okay. So I factor and I find zeros, okay? So I'm looking for where the graph crosses the x-axis, okay? So that's when y equals zero, right? So we're setting it equal to zero. Basically what that means is we set each of these parts equal to zero, right? So I could think of this as x squared. I can also think of it as x times x times x plus two, right? And that's how we're going to think of it at the moment. Okay. So I'm going to set each of these equal to zero. I'm going to set X equal to zero, which is just X equals zero, right? And I'm going to make a note. This is part of step three. I'm going to make a note that there were two of these X's, which means we had a multiplicity of two. Okay. Just making a little side note there. And then I'm going to set this guy equal to zero. So X plus two equals zero. And when I solve that down, I get X equals negative two. Okay. So these are my zeros, X equals zero and X equals negative two. So I'm going to go ahead and graph these. So we're going to have one at zero and one at negative two. Okay. Those are my zeros. Second step, we are going to look at our end behavior. Okay. I'm going to show you a little chart here. All right. If this is overwhelming for you, don't worry. I'm going to talk about it, but I know some people like to see it written out. So if that's you take a screenshot of this, fantastic, but we're going to do it here. Okay. So first of all, we are looking at the right side of our graph. So where my graph goes from this point, does it go up or down? Okay. How we do that is we look at our leading coefficient. Okay. So in this case, it's, it's a one, right? There's a one there, a positive one. So if that number is positive, the right side of my graph ends up. If it's negative, you guessed it, it ends down. Okay. So I'm just going to put a little arrow here in pencil that shows the right side of my graph is going to go up. Okay. Then we are going to look at the left side of our graph. Does this side go up or down? Okay. For our left side, we look at the degree, which is our exponents. Okay. So when it's not factored out, when it's all together, what is my highest exponent? And we see here that it's three. Okay. What I need to know is if that degree, the highest degree is positive or negative. No, <laughs> guys, erase that. Even or odd. Sorry. <clears throat> Let's start that over. <clears throat> what I need to notice is if this highest exponent is even or odd. Okay. So it's odd. If my exponent is odd, the left side of my graph is going to do the opposite of the right side of my graph. Okay. If it were even, it would do the same thing. Okay. If this side went up, it would go up. But my degree is odd. So that means the left side of my graph is going to go, oh guys, what happened here is going to go down. Okay. And I'm putting a little pencil mark to remind myself of that. Okay. Now all I need to know is does the line go through here? Does it, what, what does it do? Right. That is where step three, my multiplicities come in. Okay. If I have an odd multiplicity. Okay. So again, a multiplicity is when you have more than one. Mm, what's the best way to describe this? So I had two X's, right? So it had a multiplicity of two. I only had one X plus two, right? So it has a multiplicity of one. If I had had another X plus two or two more of those, the most multiplicity would be two or three, right? So it's how many of each set you have. So my zero has a multiplicity of two, 
which means on that point, my graph is going to bounce either up or down. We figured out that this side is going up, so I know it's going to go up. It's going to bounce there. It's not going to go through it. It's going to bounce there kind of like a parabola, right? Now on my X minus two, it just has a multiplicity of one. It has an odd multiplicity. So my graph is going to go through that point. Okay. So if you have an odd multiplicity, it's going to go through. The shape might differ a tiny bit, but your teacher probably doesn't mind you knowing that at this moment or showing it at this moment. Okay. So if you have an odd multiplicity, it's going to go straight through. If you have an even multiplicity, it's going to bounce. And if you're like, lady, what on earth are you talking about? Let me just show you. Okay. So I know this side ends down, right? At negative two, I had a multiplicity of one. So my graph is going to go through that. At zero, I had a multiplicity of two. So it's going to bounce and end up. Okay. So it's going to look something like this. It's going to go through that point, bounce and up. Oh my gosh. Okay. So my optional fourth step would be to plug in some more points. So you'd probably, you'd want to do this step before you drew it to plug in some more points like negative one to find out exactly how high that bump is, right? Or to plug in one, two, three, and get some more points. Okay. The reason this step is optional at this point is because your teacher may not really care how accurate the height of these bumps are at this current time. Okay. That's why I didn't put tick marks on the up and down for now, because this is just a rough sketch and we're not doing exact points except for these guys, right? Okay, so that optional th fourth step would be to plug in some points to get some more accuracy on how high these are, but I'm not gonna do it right now. If you want to, you go for it, okay? But we just have a rough sketch. So y equals x cubed plus two x squared looks a little something like this, okay? I hope this made sense. If you need some more examples, I will link a playlist, thanks.